Not a lot of camera angle, but like I showed, there are options to add it. Did the, this get buzzed by a bird? Hello, drone racers. This is the King Kong 90 GT that I reviewed about four months ago. This is the King Kong 110 GT that I reviewed about a month ago. And now this is the King Kong Fly Egg 100. It's kind of a weird change for them, but we'll see how it works out. The 90 GT has been a great model for a lot of people. There's a really big Facebook community just about it. Um, a lot of mods available for it, a lot of help available for it. I was really excited about the 110 because it's almost a three inch drone and that's really what I was looking for, but I had a few issues with it. The biggest was that the video would cut out on full throttle and I ended up replacing the connector with a XT30 and that helped a little bit, but really what helped is a much better battery. This is the battery that I ended up using with it as just here kind of a late update for it. It's 80C with an XT30 2S LiPo. They're available on Amazon. I'll link that down below. These were really good. It fixed my video issue, but then I think my flight controller was all screwed up. Flight controller upgrade will probably fix that. I just haven't had time to get to it, back to it. I had plans to add an OSD and a buzzer to this, but before I could get that done, they've come out with a new model that has essentially replaced the 95 and the 110 GT, I think. And here it is, the Fly Egg. Let's take a look. I'm starting to have a collection of these uh, King Kong bins. Well, there's a big gotcha right off the bat. This is a Free Sky XM that I've got, and because some of XM receiver have firmware issues, the phenomenon is when XM already bind to your radio, some power to the drone, but XM receivers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it basically says, if it doesn't work, try it again and update your firmware. We'll get back to that. We have props. These look like the same size props as the 90 GT. Essentially, I think they are. Yep. Prop guards, I am not using those this time. If you're gonna fly inside the house, the prop guards are nice, but this is, to me, these are a little bit too big and these are mainly outside flyers. This is the stock Free Sky manual from the look of it. Another battery that looks like it's pretty much the same battery they've been using, which worked great in the 90 GT, worked terrible in the 110 GT. I will we'll try it on this and see how it goes. USB cord, because I don't have a hundred of those. Motor guards that I really don't have any intention of using. Screws, which again, they label them and I really like it, like it. Those are probably just if you use these for the additional height, I'm guessing. And then another, they use these rubber bands, which are fine. These rubber bands actually work really well to hold the batteries in place, except when you break one, they're virtually impossible to replace. I broke the one on this. I'm like, I'm not taking the entire stack apart to put a new one in. I just went to Velcro. So these are great until they break and then I'm never putting another one back in. Who are you kidding? So here we go, here's the drone. It looks small. So this is a King Kong plug and play but it has aluminum, so it looks really cool. Because the KV of motors is too high, suggest using 2S battery. I think the 110 said that. I, uh, I, I, I put a 3S on it anyway, and that might be why I'm having flight controller problems. Might have burned up a motor, I don't know. But let's get that out of the way. So it's using the JST lead again, and these wires are tiny, teeny tiny. What are those, like 20 gauge? I, I think those are 20 gauge wires. I can't quite tell, so that's a little disappointing. I, I was hoping they were gonna go up and not down. So we have the m camera mount, and the camera is kind of interesting. It's lined up in here, and it looks like it's just kind of wedged in there. So I'm guessing you could loosen this aluminum frame, which is, that looks awesome. This frame is just awesome. There's a little bit of a tilt to it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna really scrub the brightness so you can see this. There are notches in the side of the aluminum frame here and they look like teeth. So what you can do is loosen this and move this camera to another notch and it kind of just has options for camera angle. I like that design a lot. So it's not completely free floating. It is locked in there. It is not gonna move, but it's adjustable. Seems to be a really clever design. I like that a lot. We do have LEDs on this model and it's supposed to have a buzzer, I think, somewhere. That was one of the big upgrades. Now. I do like this open design. The VTX is on top. It's basically the same as the 90 GT, but it will make it really easy to see those. Those LED lights that we were talking about in the code to see the transmission, you couldn't see that on the 110. So I do like that on this. It looks like it'd be super sturdy. Frame is nice and strong and thick. 
And these motors have absolutely no marking on them at all. Those are interesting. Those almost look like, they almost look like Emacs motors. They kind of remind me of the Baby Hawk. Some of the, several of the Emacs uh, designs. So not a lot of camera tilt here. We'll probably play with it and try it and then increase that. A lot of room, a lot of open room to work with though. I kind of like what they do here. They did the same thing on the others where they've basically zip tied and connected these antennas together to give you a good permanent connection. The XM is in the bottom. That is the same thing I had on the other one, on the 110. And what they've done is kind of wind the antenna up in uh, inside so then this part's hanging out. I think I actually like that better than what I did. I had a lot hanging out the back. That's a pretty good layout. I found the buzzer. It's right there. It's actually a pretty big buzzer. You'd think they could get a smaller buzzer in there, but I guess it needs to be loud. So it's in the front instead of the back, but it is tucked up in there. No OSD on this, but it does have a buzzer, which is uh, which is a step up. So because this is a bind and fly, that is what I'm going to do. That's uh, my take on these. When they make a bind and fly, they should make it so I can just bind it and fly it. So just in case this is your first drone, I'll go ahead and go through and set this up on my FreeSky Tyrannus. If you have a Q7, it's gonna be very, very similar. So you should be able to follow along without a problem. So I'm gonna go through and set up a new model. I like having a new model every time. I will go through and select quadcopter and, and page and page and page and page and done. Now on the first page, I will give it a name. Okay, so this will be a D16 model. And while I'm here, I will set failsafe to no pulses, which is what we want. So onto the next page and, oops, onto the next page. So I'm gonna set up three switches in this case. Switch one, and I don't worry about naming them anymore. Switch one I set up as SA. That is my arming switch. Switch two, I have a three-way switch for my modes. And switch three, I set up this one as the buzzer, which is nice, we have a buzzer on this one. On to the next page. And then all I have to do is go in and exit, in and exit, in and exit. Okay, so that's all we have to do for this one. So that should be set up and ready to bind. This battery should ship with half a uh, charge on it. So that should work well enough for binding. Let's see if we can get in here. So now the bind button is right there in the corner, teeny tiny. So I'm gonna try and get my thumbnail on it. Okay, I've got it pressed down. Notice I don't have any props on here yet. So there we go. I think we're set there. Go into menu and bind. Red light is flashing. That's good. Exit. So now that should, I think means it's bound. Unplug it and plug it back in and we should just have a green light. Good. So now, those are nice bright LEDs. I do like those. I think those are new too. So we are bound to the radio. Ooh, that buzzer's loud. I like that because this is an easy model to get lost. So hopefully switch one up here is our arm switch. Mm, didn't seem to do anything. Oh yeah, I forgot. I do have a manual. Let's check that. Probably will tell us. There we go. I like that they have PIDs set. So they pre-program PIDs and they actually test this on the King Kongs, which is one of the reasons I'm a big King Kong proponent. They actually set this up for you so you don't have to get frustrated with it right out of the box. And that's the reason these usually fly a lot better than most right out of the box. All right, she's not working, so we're gonna have to uh, plug it in. Okay, so let's plug this in with a USB port to see if it lights up the receiver, depends on the board here does not appear to so we'll give it some a battery connection to and find out why it won't arm let's go straight to modes switch is set to arm but it's probably a problem with the receiver tab yeah well there's there's the big one uh, the channel mapping is wrong I brought this up before if I had to do it again on my Tyrannus I would set it up as ATR from the factory or right off the bat, but now we need to change it to Spectrum, which is T-A-E-R, and now that will probably auto-magically fix everything for me. 
There we go. Now it'll arm. While we're in here, let's take a look at the rest of it. Ports, we have uh, three UARTs and gives a lot more options. Multi-shot, which is interesting. I'm going to go ahead and enable motor stop. I like motor stop. I think it uh, just works better for me. LED strip. Unfortunately, no OSD. We do have VBAT, and uh, I think that's the only change I'm going to make there. That is a loud buzzer. I know I already said that, but man, that is a loud buzzer. PID tuning, we'll just take a look at their PIDs. Yeah, they did. They changed it a lot. Those are uh, quite different. They're pretty low. The proportional is very low, but it's probably very safe for them. Hopefully it makes everything work out right. Modes, while we're at it, while we're doing it, I will go ahead and enable air mode. I don't know why they don't have air mode enabled. And I will set the beeper to aux three. That way if I lose it, I can enable it manually. So now it will fly. Now I'm gonna go test it. So I've got one of my good high C batteries in here first to test with. So let's see, there we go. There's a straight hover in auto level mode. So let's check horizon mode and that looks good. We're good. A little too far away, I can't see it. It's getting dark, I don't have a whole lot of time. I'm not sure air mode's enabled. It seems really slow. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that looked good. And just test rate mode, make sure it does what I expect. Yep, that looks good. Okay. So uh, this battery wasn't quite full, but we'll do a quick test on it. The stock battery is charging, so we'll test that in just a minute. Do a test here, see how things look right out of the box. Not a lot of camera angle, but like I showed, there are options to add it. Did this get buzzed by a bird? Let's turn on rate mode here. Camera is handling the darkness okay. It's not that dark, but this is not a screamer though. Whoa. So this is, I would call it a cruiser. You know what, even with uh, this camera, stock camera angle might be about right. Because there's a little wobble. Could use a little bit of pid tuning. Do I hear it beeping at me? I'm not sure. So it's small. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back and uh, change about the battery. Okay, now we have the stock battery, and it is fully charged here. And uh, I've got a good signal with the XM. I don't seem to have any firmware problems there. Oh yeah, I'm still in auto level mode, so turn into rate mode. And <sighs> it's good. It's not great. It's not blowing my socks off. I mean, this is. This seems to be a good drone. It's nice that it has a buzzer. An OSD would be nice. It seems about the same as the 90 GT, but it looks a little cooler. Um, it could use a little more PID tuning. It's throwing itself out just a little bit. Um, but it, it's definitely good. I'm curious, I, I really wanna try the, uh, the, the larger model, the three inch model. Because does it have more gusto? Can it take a 3S without a problem? Seeing as battery's already yelling at me. Yeah, beep, beep, beep. Yeah, I hear you. So the problem is it yells at me when I give it full throttle, but I want to give it full throttle because this just isn't, it's good. I mean, but it's not thrilling. It's not the, uh, it's not a lizard. It's not a lizard. That, that's really what it comes down to. All right, so I think, no, I haven't quite worn out. Part of it is beta flight beeping at me because the defaults are generally too conservative. The battery's not really dead, but that is nice because that's why you get, since there's no telemetry, there's a full punch out. Yep, there it says, hey, I'm done. But I don't have any of the problems that I had with the uh, 110 GT. So let's level this out. I'm gonna check the battery. And uh, oops. Okay, this is the 450 milliamp ADC battery. And punch out, you know, I can tell a little bit of a difference on the punch out. But whoa, geez, a lot of wobble. So here's what this drone is this is the drone I will let my son fly. 
I wanted him to fly the 110 GT, but it had uh, it has issues that I need to work on. There you know that's pretty zippy. If I take the corner, nope. Nope. Can't take that corner that fast. There we go, we'll try again. We're still in good shape. But I couldn't make that corner, which the Lizard, the AR Fun Pro, wouldn't have any problem with at all. The 250 quads just do that and don't even think about it. So this is not in that class. But it's very smooth. I have a dirty lens now. And it's just a good flyer. If I wanted to race, this isn't going to compete. Not at all. But if I was giving this to my dad or my son, I would give them this in a heartbeat. And it does seem to have the same video as the 90 GT, which is just rock solid. Really, really good video. Probably shouldn't do a range test on this. The XM will handle it, I guess. Let's see. We're at 100 meters now. Yeah, we're going to get out to 200 meters with this thing. Oop, 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 except the XM didn't do it. I lost it with the XM. I still had really good video signal, but my XM lost signal. So I'm guessing this was stuck underneath the battery too much because a single XM should be able to go further than 200 meters without a problem, but I had no stick input at all. But what was great is it was incredibly easy to find. This buzzer, as I've said several times, is super loud. As soon as I got within 50 meters of it, I was able to hear it without a problem. It stopped buzzing on its own, but then I flipped the switch and I went right to it. There was no digging around, losing it. There was no chance of losing it. So that is awesome. That is a huge improvement from the previous models, just having a buzzer built in. Really, really big deal. I like the adjustable camera angle, but it doesn't really seem necessary because this is not a screamer. If your intention is to race micro drones, it's probably not the right one for you. What you want in that case is a AR Fun Pro or a Lizard or the uh, SPC Maker, um, the new one with the micro built in or an awesome Q95, one of those that will really scream. This is not a screamer. This is a flyer for someone who's getting started that wants to fly around, wants to fly around fast, but not scream around the yard. They want the built-in buzzer that's super loud so they can find it. And they just want to have some fun flying around. It's really good for that. I crashed it three or four times today. It seems to be really durable. I didn't even bend a prop, which was very impressive for me. So right now, it doesn't seem to be the best at pretty much anything. But it's really good at what it does. Um, it delivers pretty well. It could use a little more pid tuning. I had some loss going around corners and some jitter and jello and I think uh, 3.2 Betaflight will just fix everything on this and make it amazing because 3.2 is amazing. I got to try it today. It's amazing. You're gonna see a lot of videos on that but final rating on this it's good for a first option. Oh, I want to show you one thing that I found that was really cool. One of the things I like is none of the previous models fit in these plastic totes, and this one does. So you can actually just store it in the tote, throw in your extra blades, throw in some batteries, and be good to go, and just carry it all in this little tote. And then the old ones I don't think ever fit inside there, especially not with the props on. So that's pretty cool. Now I really want to try the 130, though, with the 3-inch to see if it has more oomph. If you found this useful, leave a like down below. And if you didn't, leave a dislike. Give us a thumbs down. Whatever. If you want to see me try the 130 Fly Egg, give me 100 likes and we will order that model. I've kind of got a big queue, so I wasn't planning on getting it, but I kind of like this. So if you want to see it, give it a like and we will make that happen. But until next time, remember, I, I guess it's kind of shaped like an egg.